Hey there, today we're painting a little magical watercolor and gouache landscape. So now let's get started with the painting. At first I did a little sketch with my pencil and you can pause the video after the sketch and copy it in your own time because this is still a little bit sped up. I always have to speed up my videos because otherwise they would take forever. This piece took me about two and a half hours, something like that. Sometimes I film and don't really paint while I film. Also watch this flower being shoved back out of the frame because it just was in my way. Always trying to get the the frame to and everything look pretty but it also has to be functional so sometimes the decor gets shoved out of the frame. And uh, for the sketch I'm just using a sketch a, a statler pencil. <laughs> I can't talk today. I don't know why. I just got up. I do these voiceovers first thing in the morning and sometimes my brain hasn't woken up yet. But my voiceovers are best when I do them first thing in the morning. So here's what I'm doing. Here you can see the sketch. It's very basic. I just did this lamppost on the left side and then I did some mountains in the background and some bushes in the foreground. So very, very simple sketch. And everything else was built up layer upon layer. And so now I started with watercolors. I'm using the White Knights watercolors. This set, I love it because it's just a tiny set and you have the essential colors in there. I just switched out the beige kind of color with a turquoise tone because I love that one more and now it's my favorite palette. And I will try to link all of the products that I'm using in the description box down below as always. I'm also using Arches Cold Press watercolor paper. I think it's 300 GSM. So I will try to link that as well. And I just love how the paper holds this holds the watercolor and I just started to paint the sky and I'm now doing the bushes and honestly I didn't have a huge concept for this other than the fact that I wanted the lighter green tones to be on top and darker tones to be at the bottom and with the sky I wanted the uh, area around the lantern to be warmer and everything else to be darker and I did a second layer on the sky later on as well so I just built up everything over time and honestly I just loved working on this paper here you can see that I'm using my heating tool to speed up the drying process because it takes forever to let this dry on that paper because that paper just holds so much water and it would take forever and I've been loving this heating tool a lot. I will link a similar one to this one as well. I couldn't find the exact same one on the US Amazon but I could find another one from the same brand so I hope that it still works and by the way if you buy anything with my links I get a small commission that supports my channel so if you want to support my channel and and you already have something that you would like to buy from Amazon, you could buy anything with my link. You could just click on my link and then buy something else that you wanted to buy anyways. Then I get a small commission from for that supports my channel. And obviously, I think I get more if you buy the exact same product. I don't know. But it still benefits me if you just use the link in any form whatsoever. So here you can see that I painted the mountains in the background and I had the same concept here. I wanted the top parts to be lighter and the bottom parts to be darker. This is just the first layer of everything. So everything's a little bit messy still and here you can see that I'm doing this kind of area behind the bushes and this has more of a green tone and darker colors on the bottom and lighter colors on the top. So it's the same principle with all of them and you can play around with the colors a bit you don't have to use the exact same colors as I do and I say that so often and people still try to 
copy the exact same colors that I have and honestly I can relate because when I follow a tutorial I want to have the same colors as well but I really urge you to experiment a little bit and play around with everything get inspired to maybe create even your own piece and just change it around there's no shame in that if your piece looks a little bit different no worries just have fun with it play around with it and now I'm using a new palette that I have and my girlfriend actually made that for me you can see sapphic pottery on the back so follow my girlfriend on instagram and or tiktok I will link their channels on in the description box as well because uh, they're currently experimenting a little bit with making these palettes and will probably sell them soon so if you want one of these I've been really loving this one it's so cute and I wanted to have a shell palette and now I got it and I love it so much and I'm using gouache now I used mostly Windsor and Newton gouache but my white one ran out so I used a white Arteza gouache tube and I have to order some new white gouache because that runs out the first always and I don't know why brands don't give you multiple white colors honestly I think Arteza gave me two of them I'm not sure and I just need to look if I can find another white tube somewhere or just have to order a bigger tube of white gouache so you can see that I started with the bushes and I just did dots and now I'm doing the grass in the foreground and I'm just doing lines so I'm just playing around with this really not thinking about it too much don't spread out everything too evenly because when you spread it out too evenly it doesn't look as organic anymore and so I'm trying to have those little clusters as well with the flowers now I have areas where there are more flowers and areas with less flowers and also I have more flowers at the top versus at the bottom because I figured that at the bottom the flowers wouldn't be as visible just because everything in the shadow so the flowers are more at the top and also I think the bushes have more flowers at the top I think and now I mixed this purple pink ish tone and I'm using that for the flowers in the foreground and just doing those super messy dots on top of these stems grass whatever it is that we call it and now I'm using a lighter version of the same color I just I think I just mixed some white into that and then I did even more dots and now we have two different colors and then I used a darker green tone to get even more leaves and whatever it is down there. And this just adds a little bit more character and makes it much more interesting. And then I decided to give the flowers at the top of the bushes some shadows as well. I used a very dark desaturated purple tone for this and just used very little paint so that it's not too dark and then I used a pink tone to start to color in the lamppost and I just uh, did the lamppost with gouache entirely I didn't do a watercolor layer here I think it turned out really nice uh, the lamppost didn't really have to have a background color with the watercolors in the end so here's just the first layer use the heating tool now I'm using a purple tone and I'm starting to add some details to it and I was looking at the reference picture and if I don't forget I will insert the reference picture somewhere so you can see it and it had a lamppost on it it looks completely different from the picture that I'm painting now because I changed around the colors and everything so I was just looking where it has the details and I was changing it up a little bit not completely following it I was just I was really in a mood to have fun and not overthink anything and so I I did a little bit of an outline here with uh, I think it's almost white I added in a little bit of pink I think and uh, just outlined it so it would stand out a little bit more against the background and I think it's slowly coming together and I 
thought that it already looked really cool at this point. This is this rare kind of art piece that doesn't really have an ugly stage, I think, because I think it looked cool all the time because of the colors. I just love those colors, love the color combo right now. So now I mixed a darker purple tone. I believe that I also mixed in a little bit of black for that. And then I just darkened up the sky a little bit more and kind of went over the lamppost area with more water and less paint just so we have a little bit of a gradient. And you can see I'm just slowly adding in a little bit more color and here's where we are after that. And now um, after all of that has dried, I painted the light part, the lamp part of the lamppost and I used a very light yellow tone and then I used the same colors that I had used previously for the top part. And I also did these wires or whatever it is that holds the lamp into place with the purple tone and I decided that it needed a little bit more fun and uh, I don't know character in the foreground so I used another green tone a lighter tone and I think it's a little bit more of a bluish tone so I added in a little bit of blue and white and did more leaves in the foreground and then I mixed another green tone, a very desaturated tone and started to put some dots on the background. So now we're really incorporating the gouache in the mountains as well. And I think that that really made the piece pop, made it look so much more fun and so much more sophisticated also. And I'm just really coloring it in, dotting it in, really giving everything a little bit of a texture. Now I'm using a lighter green tone and you can really play around a little bit with the colors and I just made sure that in this area I used some cooler green tones. I didn't use, I don't think that I used any warmer green tones. Those were meant to be for the foreground bushes, just so that you can tell them apart a little bit. Make sure that those in the background are a little bit darker, a little bit more desaturated. I just added in a little bit more blue and maybe also a little bit more black, just to make it look cooler, more desaturated, like I said. And... You can see that I just got rid of this kind of frame that we had for the mountain, this line. I didn't think that it looked good at that point. And so I went over it and just um, gave everything this nice kind of texture, this kind of border. And I think that it looks so fluffy. My girlfriend also said that it looks fluffy and... It reminds me a little bit of cotton candy. And also this piece is meant to be like a magical safe place. And in the end, I'm going to add some little creatures. And on my Instagram, people have pointed out that the creatures, they look like ghosts or something. But I imagine that they're good spirits and they protect this place. So it's a good place. It's not a scary place. That's just what was going on in my mind. And here you can see that I mixed some purple pinkish tones and I basically repeated the same thing that I had already done with the bushes in, that are kind of in the mid mid ground not in the foreground not in the background is it called the mid ground probably not and now I'm doing the same thing here as well and just using instead of the green I used pink tones orange tones I was trying to be consistent with the colors that were already on there with the watercolors I just wanted to incorporate the gouache so everything would fit together more and so that it would have more texture on the mountain and honestly I love this effect I love how it turned out it looked for some reason it looks so delicious I don't know if it reminds me of cotton candy but it just it looks so delicious I don't know why <laughs> I just want to eat it I love those colors and I just did dots and dots and really spread that around was really playing around with this and just having fun I was also while I was painting this I was on 
group Zoom calls, so sometimes I got a little bit distracted and then went back into the painting. So this went on over the course of some time. I think it took three days or something like that. I didn't paint all of this in one session. I rarely ever do if I do a piece like that. So it's just then I cut it into one piece and try to make it as cohesive as possible. So if this takes you a while to repaint, I totally get it. And also if you want to simplify it a little bit so you're quicker with it, I totally get that too. People tend to simplify the more complicated tutorials and I think this one can be simplified a lot. You can just start out with the gouache and skip the watercolors or just don't add as many details and whatever it is, if you just want to get inspired by this piece and not completely copy it, that's amazing as well. I'm here to inspire you in any way and I'm aware that these tutorials are a bit quick, I'm talking quick, I'm trying to fit everything into 20 minutes, so it's really hard to follow these sometimes and I'm also trying to give you some background info about everything, not just talk about what I'm doing on camera. So it's hard to give you good <laughs> instructions on that. Here you can see that I started with the trees. And what I also wanted to say is if you want more detailed uh, tutorials from me check out my Skillshare classes I have a lot of them at this point and I have some gouache Skillshare classes as well and as well as with everything else they're always linked in the description box down below and you get uh, two months or two weeks I don't know I think they, they changed it just check it out beforehand for free with my link but you get a trial and just check it out and in case you're looking for uh, small, uh, slower, <laughs> that's the word, slower tutorials. And here you can see I did just those basic shapes for the trees. I did the mid-tone color first and I did a lighter color and now I'm doing a darker color. I used the watercolors for the darker color because gouache is, it doesn't have as much contrast because obviously that's how gouache works. The darker colors they dry lighter and the lighter colors dry darker so you don't have as much contrast versus with watercolors. So I used a darker watercolor tone for the shadows and honestly I love combining watercolors and gouache because it, you have the best of both worlds. You get to have the vibrant colors that watercolors give you and you also have the opacity and the soft look that you get from gouache. And I just need to practice a little bit more in combining the two mediums because most of the time I just use either of them. So I'd love to do more of those combination paintings. And most of you probably already have watercolors and gouache at home. If not, I really recommend investing in a basic gouache set and probably already have watercolors at home. I think most artists have watercolors at home. I just love them. They're so fun to use. So here you can see me add more details here and there. I added more details to the lamppost. Now I'm doing more on the background mountain and making this one fluffy as well. I didn't want to lose too much of the watercolor texture that I had already put there but also I wanted everything to fit together so kind of find tried to find a balance between those two and painted over some of the texture that was already established. So here you can see that I added in the same tree that I already did on the top right and it's just the same thing here here the dark tones and uh, the mid tones first then I did the lighter tones and then I think I also went back in with the watercolors to add in more of the texture and the mid tones are barely visible here but I think I don't think that it looks bad I think it looks good because it looks like that's intentional like it's kind of a little bit it bleeds into the background a little bit kind of because often that happens in real life colors have the same tone 
a lot of the time. So here I'm painting a little moon. I used white and um, I think it was pure white. And then I just spread it around so that it would reactivate the watercolor layer a little bit. You can also add in a little bit of a darker color to give it more contrast. And I was playing around with the texture of the moon a little bit until I was satisfied. I'm still not completely satisfied with it, but I think it looks okay. And then I added some stars. Those are just very round dots. I wanted them to fit in with the piece and make the, give them this soft kind of look. So they're just round dots. And then I made the light in the lamp post a little bit lighter, just went over everything and just smooth everything out and now I'm doing fireflies so I love to paint two circles a darker one first then let that dry and then do a lighter one most of the time I use just white for the second one and it's an orange tone for the first one so these are my fireflies and then I started to add in the little ghosts that I had already mentioned earlier and this one I removed later on so don't copy the first one because I was not happy with it or if you want to copy you can but I just removed that later on and then I also did those kind of warm snake like creatures and I loved those way more I think that they look cool I think they look cute in a way and so I did multiple of those and I did them with watercolors as well with a dark tone and then I added their eyes with the, with gouache and here you can see that the first one is disappearing I killed him I'm so sorry but I didn't like him and he was right in the center so I was not satisfied with that because I really loved the painting overall and I did not want him there <laughs> So I painted another uh, one of these warm creatures and I love that one way more. It's so fun because it's kind of it looks kind of like a Loch Ness monster. <laughs> and I just put that one here and then I gave that one an eye as well. And those are the little creatures. And now I'm just adding in some finishing touches to the piece. I thought that these uh, corners of the bushes in the background that it looked a little bit harsh so I went over that again and just smoothed everything out and honestly I'm so happy with this piece I don't know if it's the best tutorial because it took a lot of steps and it was a little bit complicated but I wanted to show you how to paint this because people seem to have loved this when I put it in my Instagram stories so here's the finished piece I hope you enjoyed this video again as a reminder if you're currently building an art business and want to invest in some one-on-one -on -one coaching I will have the link to that in the description box down below I really hope that you enjoyed this video if you did so please give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time goodbye